Hello. Today we're going to find out which Sherman is the best, because a wise man once said, a War Thunder tech tree is incomplete without a Sherman tank. This is the War Thunder Sherman tank tier list. We're going to start off in F tier, make our way up to S tier. We'll talk about some hidden strategies and features that you might not have known about with each tank. And you'll probably find out about some hidden gems that you've never considered playing before. What isn't a hidden gem though is everything in F tier. And it pains me that we've got to start off with this vehicle. The Skink is an anti-aircraft vehicle equipped with four 20mm cannons. It's basically just an over-tiered Werble Wind that happens to have a porcelain roof. And because you can't strafe it with bullets, somehow this means it goes massively up in battle rating. People were wanting this vehicle for years. At least as long as I've been playing the game since 2016, this vehicle has been on the cards for something that people really wanted to be added. And then it finally got added to the game. And ever since then, it's been up-tiered into oblivion. Aside from light tanks and other anti-aircraft, it doesn't really have enough penetration to take out enemy vehicles and it really struggles to take out barrels and tracks so even playing as a support vehicle isn't particularly useful it doesn't really have the utility in the terms of speed like an r3 that can just cap loads of points it's not particularly great at its intended role or anything in particular really solid f tier when it comes to shermans the worst hole you can have is the cast hole design most tanks in the game use rolled homogenous armor, but for the few tanks that use cast armor, it's 6% less effective at protecting your crew from penetrations. And not only that, the Sherman cast hull armor design has rounded corners, which create flat weak spots that are super easy to penetrate. This doesn't necessarily make a tank bad, but for the M4 Tipo, it's really not doing it any favors. No stabilizer and no APHE. It's got gun depression like a Russian tank, but it's even worse than a Russian tank because the tank is so tall that it's a bigger problem than it is for the usually rather small Russians. You could definitely make the gun do work for you, but compared to all the other Shermans on this list, it's F tier. Sorry. This is the Sherman VC. You might notice how similar this tank is to the previous one, so I'm not going to repeat myself too much here. It has the M4A4 hull, which gives it a little bit more mobility, and what makes this tank special, rather to its own detriment, is an APDS shell. The benefit here of the APDS shell is you get more penetration at the expense of not quite the same post penetration damage. And this is completely pointless because at the battle rating that this vehicle is at, you don't really need that extra penetration. And personally, I think I'm just going to end up using Shot Mark 8 in the future. The tank also suffers from some of the problems I mentioned about the TPO, like the gun depression and general mobility. So overall, nothing special, not very interesting. E tier. The M4A175 is an interesting tank, and I unexpectedly quite enjoyed playing it. It's basically an M4A176, except with the 75mm cannon, which means you're at a much lower battle rating, but you still have the better turret armor of the higher battle rating tank. In places where you can fully hide your hull and only expose your turret, the tank works really well. The Monument on Normandy this can work pretty well on. However, this is a pretty niche situation and some maps this just isn't viable. Overall, it's fun, unique and interesting, but nothing particularly amazing. D tier. The Israeli M51 Premiums are pretty fun when it comes to fighting German mains. Particularly, fighting Panthers is especially satisfying as you can eviscerate any sort of armor they have. So if you don't know already, the tank fires a heat round as opposed to an APHE, which is more conventional on a lot of the other Shermans. This is immediately more annoying than an APHE or solid shot round as you now have to be careful of bushes absorbing your heat shell. In the War Thunder universe, we have this great thing called heat shells where sometimes they obliterate the enemy tank in one shot and you're like, oh chef's kiss and then um other times uh not so much if you experience a heat shell moment at the wrong time you better have some cover to hide it otherwise you're definitely going to go kaboom when you stop the tank it takes about four to five business days before the gun is level and ready to fire the tech tree version of the tank is on the much worse cast design of hull but even with that i'm still going to bump it up into c tier just purely because you can spawn it in three times without having to use any sort of backups 
One nice thing about this tank is you get a little bit more modern of a smoke deployment system. And unrelated to the actual gameplay of it, the model is super high resolution and really nice with a bunch of extra details all over it. Overall, yeah, D tier. Sadly, I can't show you the Yugoslav Sherman equipped with a 122mm cannon. Gaijin, please add. Another thing I can't show you are my balls. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Hi, I'm a shouty man and I'm here to tell you about new and improved Manscaped 5.0. Does this tank remind you of your testicles? Then you need the Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. Just look at this chap right here. A complete makeover. <laughs> Pesky nose hairs getting you down. The Weed Whacker 2.0 is for you. New Weed Whacker 2.0 can be used anywhere. It's waterproof, cordless and rechargeable. The Weed Whacker 2.0 is absolute confidence in absolute convenience. And that's not all! Once you complete your trimming, Crop Soother Aftershave can be applied to the delicate area. And for added freshness, now introducing Crop Preserver. Keep any nasty smells at bay with this ball deodorant. So what are you waiting for? Head to manscaped.com to get your hands on the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra today. And use promo code ZOLTON20 to get 20% off and free international shipping. That's manscaped.com with code ZOLTON20 for 20% off and free shipping. We've chatted quite a lot about the Firefly type Shermans already, so I'm going to make this one quite brief. I'm putting the Sherman Firefly in D tier and we can put the premium version on the line between D and C tier. To be honest, when I first was creating this video, I would have probably put it in B tier, but... As they say, comparison is the thief of joy. And when you really look at these tanks, they're not that great. As I said before about the gun depression being a problem, they're not exactly very mobile. And sometimes solid shot has a solid shot moment. I kind of realized a lot about my feelings when it came to the Firefly is more just, I like the idea of playing a Sherman Firefly. It's a very iconic tank. It's integral to the Tiger story. But when it comes to a video game, that doesn't count for too much other than your personal feelings. The Polish version of the tank is a little bit better. You do get a much better mantle and it's a little bit more mobile, not because it gets a better engine, but because it's a little bit lighter. It's a pretty decent amount of extra mobility, which does make it a little bit more nippy around the battlefield. The Polish version of the tank gets some pretty nice unique decals, but annoyingly they're completely covered up by the add-on track armor. So, personally, I make the slightly silly decision to uninstall the track armor so I can see those cool decals. Overall, it's probably B tier in the context of the whole game, but just comparing it to Sherman's, this is a D tier for me. Moving on to C tier. The M4A276W is the first moist tank on our list. The wet stowage the tank has just reduces the chance of being ammo racked immediately. You can find the tank in the Russian and American tech trees. The Russian version is a premium and I probably wouldn't recommend spending the Golden Eagles unless you're just a Sherman fanatic. Purely because the Russians already have a very strong lineup at that battle rating and it's just not really the best way to spend a limited amount of Golden Eagles. But that doesn't mean the tank is bad. Just like a lot of the other Shermans, it gets the short stop stabilizer and the fantastic 76mm cannon. The downside to this tank is you're still using the M4A2 chassis so getting around the battlefield can be a little bit sluggish and it is marginally heavier than some of the Shermans you might compare it to. But as good as the stabilized 76mm cannon is, the hull leaves a lot to be desired and at this battle rating it's not saving you from anything. If you can get into a good position then the downsides of the tank is massively reduced. It's just getting there is the problem. C tier. The SA-50 is the tactical baguette launcher that the Firefly wants to be. This tank actually has some decent amount of gun depression and you get a little bit more penetration which can definitely help at longer ranges although the shell is still notably lacking any sort of high explosive filler. Annoyingly the SA-50 also lacks a 50 cal on the roof which would come in really handy for blinding enemies or maybe even taking out tracks as the SA-50 has quite a long reload for a Sherman, which means you're going to be out reloaded by most things. It does take quite a while to get the gun on target after peeking out from behind cover, but instead of just mashing on the brakes, if you just come off the accelerator, that definitely gives you a couple of seconds of being able to fire on target. I think the SA-50 is quite well suited to sniping as it has a thousand meters a second muzzle velocity on its shell, 
And the optics are really nice. You get a really good amount of zoom when looking down the sniper scope. This baguette launcher is definitely one of the fun ones. C tier. I'd hope you would have realised by the time you got this far into this kind of video, but there are too many Shermans in this game. And a bunch of them exist around the 4.0 battle rating. And to be honest, they're all very similar. And since I'd probably put a lot of them into C tier, I've decided we need to go deeper. And I'm making a tier list in a tier list. In F tier of C tier, it's the mobile gaming Sherman. Because the only way to unlock this vehicle is to play War Thunder Mobile. And that's annoying. Moving on. I haven't put anything in E tier of C tier. So we're moving on to D tier of C tier. Are you keeping up? I hope you're keeping up. We've got the M4 hybrid for Italy. This tank is hybrid because it's all sorts of different parts of Sherman's glued together. You get the cast upper front plate glued together with a hull that's made of rolled homogenous armor. The turret is also made of cast homogenous armor, so it's very weak, and it does have the 50mm weak spot on the left side of the mantlet. It's another premium that's not really worth buying unless you're a Sherman fanatic. D tier of C tier. The tanks simply referred to as the M4A4s are, unsurprisingly, Shermans on the M4A4 hull with a 75mm cannon. The hatches on the front create a sort of flat weak spot where pretty much anything can go through. It's very similar to the hybrid Sherman, just essentially a different hull and a slightly better engine. You can find them in France, Italy and China and China even has a special premium variant with an interesting yellow camouflage. You zoom around with your stabilizer, press and left click on enemies. They're always a good time and they always slot into lineups very nicely. A solid vehicle to bring out on any occasion really. C tier of C tier. The tank referred to as literally just M4 is quite similar to the M4A4s we spoke about just now, except it has a 50 cal on the roof and a marginally worse engine. Obviously it has the same gun as pretty much all the tanks we're talking about in this section do, but a big upgrade that it does have is that there's an additional armor plate covering up the 50mm weak spot on the left side of the mantlet. Another very Shermany Sherman. B tier of C tier. Out of all the Shermans around 4.0, the Swedish Zoom Mobile has to be my favourite. This tank has an upgraded engine at 500 horsepower, which means you can really get moving around the battlefield. This is as close to a Sherman will ever get to being a light tank. The tank unfortunately doesn't get access to add-on armour, and annoyingly you don't get the smoke grenades either. When IKEA were building the tank, they decided that machine guns weren't for them, and they've removed the top 50 cal, as well as the whole mounted machine gun. It does mean you technically don't have the machine gun weak spot anymore, but because this tank uses one of the earlier turret designs there's plenty of weak spots to be shot out there so as long as they've got a brain this isn't really an advantage one nice thing though is that even though you've lost that whole machine gun you haven't actually lost the crew member so you're still at a full complement of sherman crewmen if you ever feel useless just remember the swedish sherman has a whole machine gunner and the one time he's useful is when one of his best mates has just been turned into mist not an ideal existence i have to say Fun, fast, overall, it's A tier of C tier. This rare Pepe is one of the rarest tanks in game and definitely the rarest Sherman. And there's a decent chance that you didn't even know it existed and you may never even see one in battle. The German Sherman is basically the same as the M4A2 I'm going to talk about in a minute, except it lacks some of the extra add-on armor tracks. This was one of the first tanks to ever be added to War Thunder, along with a T-34 prototype, and it was only available for pre-order during the closed beta test of Ground Forces. The tank is still obtainable about once a year when Gaijin put it on sale, but for a rank 3 tank, it's exceedingly expensive, as they sell it for around 60 euros. And even if you do want to pick one up, you've got to be fast, because when it goes on sale about once a year, there's only a few thousand units sold, and then it's gone for another entire year. It really is only for the quintessential Sherman enjoyer. I personally picked mine up with some Gaijin coin I'd plundered from some events, and it's a very enjoyable tank. It is a little bit redundant because it will go into the rank 3 German lineup and that is one of the most overpowered lineups in the game so you really don't need any more help. Solid vehicle, very expensive, A tier of C tier. 
The M4A2 is the Sherman that went to the mod shop and picked out every single upgrade he could possibly have. You've got smoke shells, you've got smoke grenades, you've got add-on armor. The add-on armor is pretty nice as it is angled on the upper front plate. It's a very extensive add-on armor package and covers almost everywhere across the tank. And it ends up making this tank survive things that you might not have expected a Sherman to survive. You've also got the option of firing APCR, which can definitely help out if you get up-tiered or suddenly start facing a lot of KV-1s. When it comes to the Shermans around the 4.0 battle rating, this is as good as it gets. This is S-tier of C-tier. That's the end of the tier list within a tier list. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. That's also the end of C-tier. We're now moving on to B-tier. The Jumbo 75 has a really special place in my heart because it's one of the first Shermans I really put a decent amount of games into. As you probably know, this is basically an up-armoured Sherman. You get the standard upper front plate with a big add-on armour package slapped right onto the front. Frontally, this tank is pretty well protected and the combination of the stabiliser and the armour makes this tank an absolute unit when it comes to brawling at close quarters. These days, at current BR, the gun is a little bit lacking, but don't don't get me wrong, you can definitely make it work. It's just that you're facing tanks where you can't really disable them frontally. So there's certain situations where you're just forced to use APCR. You can also go for the barrel and track and then flank around to the side, which is decently viable as you've got the short stop stabilizers, so you should be able to get the first shot off. And the mobility on the tank is pretty good for a tank of its type. This is one of those tanks that really needs a lineup because when it's an up tier or the map is a bit rubbish, you can just spawn something else. Overall, although the armor means less these days as it faces the long 88 and the Russian 122 more often than it ever did, the tank is solid. B tier. The M4A376W is a marginal upgrade in terms of protection and armor over the M4A276W. You do have a slightly higher BR, but I find that the added mobility really helps me get into the positions that I want to be in. Tank gets a little bit of add-on track armor as well as the wet stowage for the ammunition. Other than that, it's basically the same as the M4A2 with some minor upgrades. It's another one of these solid sherman -y Shermans. It's a solid B tier. I feel like it doesn't really matter where I put the next vehicle, it's going to be controversial either way. This is the Calliope, and if you haven't played it, you've certainly heard of it. And that's not just because the tank is loud, this is one of the most meme -y vehicles in the game. Stealth isn't really an option when your weapon system sounds like this. In exchange for losing its smoke grenade launcher, this is an exact copy of an M4A2 tank, except you might have noticed it has a massive rocket launcher rack strapped to the roof. A strategy I like to use is to immediately spam rockets anytime I see any sort of enemy. You can still fire your main cannon on the move because of the short stop stabilizer and you can completely blind the enemy and almost certainly immobilize them because you'll definitely get their track and if you're lucky you might even get the kill. But if you don't you can then just use your stabilized gun to finish them off. The rockets obviously allow you to destroy multiple enemies before you've reloaded which is very unique for this battle rating. And they also allow you to attack enemies that are behind cover. The Calliope used to have this great ability where the commander's camera was placed on top of the rocket, which gave it a kind of overpowered viewing position when it came to simulator battles. A lot of people will say that this vehicle is bad because it can get immediately ammo racked from any position on the map, but there's a trick to it. Basically, sometimes the ammo rack ammo racks and sometimes it doesn't. And it seems to be on a per patch basis. So basically, if you're going to play it, I'd recommend playing it for a match, seeing if you get Amorak, and then if you do, don't play it for two months. Another update will come out, something will break, and then the vehicle will be fun again. Basically, depending entirely on how likely the rocket rack is to explode, this tank could be anywhere from E tier to S tier. The M4A1 is one of the earliest Shermans you get access to in the game, and for me, it's the most Shermany looking Sherman. I feel like this one is definitely underrated by most people. You find it in the American, British, and French tree, although the British one is ever so slightly different. What makes this really fun is you get the same M3 cannon that you find on a bunch of the other Shermans, just at a way lower battle rating. The types of tanks you're seeing are a lot weaker than what you're used to fighting with the same cannon and the tank becomes a bit of a menace to society. And you're at such a low battle rating that 
your 50 cal actually becomes a lot more useful than you used to because you see so many more vehicles that can be penned by a simple 50 cal. The British version of the tank gets access to APCR, but it's not that useful. Interestingly though, the British crew is certainly better hydrated because they've got a tactical water crate on the front of their tank. Probably for making tea or something. Overall, very fun, a bit underrated, would recommend. A tier. I think this one is probably my personal favourite of this entire video. The Jumbo 76 is an upgunned version of the Jumbo 75, exactly the same armour layout, just the change is to the gun. This tank is really hard to talk about because you kind of have to take everything you think about War Thunder and throw it out the window because when you look at the tank on paper, there is absolutely no reason it should be at this battle rating. Yet, despite that, the tank is pretty excellent. You just zoom around with the stabilised 76mm, clicking on people before they even have a chance to react. Quite often you're playing at the battle rating of the tank, or even in a down tier, just because of the volume of Tiger and Panther players. And this tank against Tiger and Panthers is fantastic. You go straight through the front plate of the Tiger, you go straight through the turret of the Panther, and comparatively, they need to take some time to aim, and they definitely can't shoot on the move unless they get very lucky. Yeah, in a full up tier against a heavy tank, you're gonna have a hard time. But most of the time, full up tier for this tank means lightly armoured Cold War vehicles, which APHE has an absolute field day with. Stabiliser, firepower, armour, mobility. This tank isn't really bad at anything. A tier. Just before we go to S tier, I want to talk about some honourable mentions that we haven't talked about in this video so far. The first of which is the M4A5, the Canadian Ram 2. It doesn't really seem that Sherman-y. Let me know what you think in the comments, but the tank really only seems Sherman by name. The M36B1 and M4T26 at least deserve a mention as they both use the Sherman hull. You can also find the 75mm Sherman cannon on some aircraft like the PBJ and XA38 and they can be very fun if you need to take your Sherman obsession to the skies. Finally of our honourable mentions, we've got the inflatable Sherman from April Fools. The tank fired armour-piercing carrots and high-explosive potatoes and was powered by several bicycles inside the tank. It was a funny little event and as it was called Unrealistic Battles, it was basically just an event making fun of World of Tanks. But enough about that, let's talk about S tier. The French Baguette Launcher FL10 is the kind of tank that makes Geneva look more like a suggestion. This tank is unique because it comes equipped with a 5 second autoloader and with 180 mils of pen you're putting rounds down range faster than your average retreating Frenchman. When it first got introduced to the game it was much lower in battle rating but the up tiers haven't seemed to really matter. The FL10 is still a super strong tank. You do have the cast hull but for this tank I don't think it really matters. This tank is all about map positioning and catching the enemy off guard and then absolutely punishing them for it. Although the tank isn't stabilised, at around 30 kph is a really nice sweet spot where the gun is very very stable. It's an absolute monster when it comes to grinding silver lines as well, especially when you pair it with something like a P63 or a P47. We're making it out of rank 3 with this one boys. S tier. The M4A3 76W is just the perfect blend of everything that makes a Sherman a Sherman. Where a lot of the Shermans either have a powerful cannon or HE filler, this one has both. You've got the 76mm cannon and at the battle rating this vehicle is at, even in a full up tier, the heaviest heavy tanks you'll ever face are easily destroyed by this cannon. And against any sort of KV-1, this tank is just a joy to play. You don't have to worry about using APCR or not having enough post penetration damage. The cannon just works. There's no need to worry about the tank lurching forward when you're trying to peek out and take a shot. You've got the trusty Sherman stabilizer and on top of all of that you've even got wet storage ammo so there's a small chance that you won't even get ammo racked. With the stabilizer you should be able to get the first shot off every time and generally you one shot anything you come up against but even if you don't the ace reload of 5.9 seconds outperforms the Panthers and Tigers, so you're firing a second round before they even realise what's hit them. This tank holds your hand, points and laughs at the German mains and sends them right back to the hangar. We're disproving death traps with this one, boys. 
S tier. The M4A3105 takes the chassis that we talked about earlier with the 76mm cannon, takes it down two BR brackets, and gives it a 105mm howitzer. At the battle rating this vehicle is at, with the frontal armor protection it has, it's near unkillable for certain vehicles in the game. It's not uncommon to go around the corner and come face to face with an enemy that has no chance of penetrating you. For example, if you find the Puma armored car to be quite an annoying vehicle to face, always flanking and getting lucky shots, then this tank is definitely for you, as it's pretty much a hard counter to the Puma. There isn't really anywhere, frontally at least, where the Puma can penetrate the tank, and this tank has HE, heat, and 50 cows, which are all pretty much the best weapons when it comes to taking out lightly armored vehicles. One problem with the tank is you don't really have any sort of electronic assistance when it comes to traversing the turret, it's all hand cranked. So it's generally recommended that you keep the turret facing forward. The lack of traverse is somewhat negated by just using your tracks to traverse the turret instead of the traversal mechanism. And it definitely helps that this Sherman has the 500 horsepower engine so you can zoom about the battlefield a little bit easier. You almost want to play this like a casemate tank destroyer and then only to reverse when you absolutely need to. Because if you're caught out with your turret off the side of your tank, not only can you not return fire, the armor on the side of the turret is much weaker than the frontal mantlet and you can be easily penetrated. And playing like that means you always keep your super strong armor pointed towards the enemy, which gives them a hell of a time trying to take you out. S tier. I really do hope you enjoyed the video and if you made it this far in, you must truly be a Sherman enthusiast. So I'd love to hear what your favorite Sherman is down in the comments below. And with that, I think you're going to want to be clicking on this video to find out exactly how we got to this point in the first place where we can have a tank game with this many Shermans.